Hello, hello, and welcome to the show with me, Gillian Gotsel. Today, I have a very interesting guest, Alex Nahai, who is the CEO of North America for the DancingSeahorse.com company. This is, even as the name suggests, a very exciting uh, project. But Alex, before we talk about the actual project, which is going to disrupt the music industry with Web3, pretty cool. Tell me a little bit about your background, please. Are you Have you been in Web3 for long? And how do you approach it from the dev, finance, or marketing? Yeah, you know, I'd say that um, I've been, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. It's a, it's a, a great, great pleasure and honor to be here. Um, as far as my involvement in Web3, I, I, I would say I've been in the space now for about a year to 18 months, um, you know, planning out this project in particular and, and working on it. And really the reason why, um, you know, we, we wanted to put together the Dancing Seahorse project is that is that the founders of this company, we are, um, we've had a long history in the music space. And, you know, we, we kind of witnessed the rise of NFTs and we saw an opportunity for a very music specific NFT. And as utility became more and more of an important part um, of NFTs in general, we, we also saw a real opportunity there because, you know, we, we appreciated that we have the relationships to be able to provide access to events and to experiences that, um, you know, token holders who haven't been working in the music business for, you know, close to 20 years, probably, you know, would take, would take a long time to, to, to accumulate that for each of them. So this, this gives us an, of an, it gives us an opportunity to provide kind of a membership, um, a private membership to our token holders and provide them this kind of unfettered access. Actually, cool. So I started off by asking you when you got into Web3, which was only a year ago, uh, which mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of because I was going on your LinkedIn. It was very lacking in details. <laughs> very stealthy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm not so, really a... Yeah, I, 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 I probably should pay more attention to my LinkedIn, but... but no, that's I, cool. That's cool. Just so tell me, tell me about your... Ask the wrong question. Tell me about your music background and your experience there. Sure. Um, so I got involved in the music business. Um, I, I actually started working as a as a producer, um, as a, as a creative when I was young, around the age of seventeen. Um, and after that, I uh, I kind of developed a, a passion for the business of music, specifically with respect to innovation in music, um, with respect to the intersection between music and technology. Because, you know, I've I've loved music for a long time, but I, at least at least at that time, I saw music as as something that that needed innovation and and needed to become to align itself with with digitization that was happening in other industries. So uh, I started working in the music business. Um, I worked for uh, for record companies at first, like Interscope Records, Atlantic Records, um, and then after university, uh, I went to law school. Um, I became a lawyer. And after becoming, becoming a lawyer, I then uh, went back into the music business and became an agent. Um, so I worked at United Talent Agency. I worked at uh, William Morris. I had the opportunity to represent, um, you know, names like uh, Adele and Celine Dion and, wow. um, and uh, The Weeknd and um, uh, Pharrell Williams and Dead Mouse. And I, I was, I was uh, working as a, as a business affairs agent um for those companies and it was it was really interesting because so many different deals would would pass along my desk um so many different uh, agreements and yeah it was a really it was a pleasure to work on those kinds of deals and um through my experience with that i also was able to get involved in the in the television space um so i started um a consultancy an entertainment consultancy about six years ago uh, and, and I've been able to, to represent uh, companies like uh, Dre's and Fox, uh, Bento Box. Um, I, uh, I actually started out by, by representing the sister company to Dancing Seahorse, which is called Stream Live. Um, and, and, you know, we booked a lot of artists for Stream Live, big artists like Rick Ross and Bella Thorne and Iggy Azalea and Migos, Juice World. Um, pretty, pretty long, pretty long list of artists that, that we had the, um, the privilege of, of booking. And it was through my involvement with Stream Live um, and the founders of Stream Live 
that we kind of put our heads together and uh, and and thought we wanted to create an NFT project. And then we teamed up with Nifty, which is um, you know the the leading NFT agency in Europe uh, mm -hmm. uh, by our standards, and that's kind of how Dancing Seahorse was born. So. I guess I want to ask the question then. So were you motivated by looking to disrupt the industry or were you motivated by the innovation that NFTs presented? You know, I think um, those two things are one and the same. Um, I think anytime there's an innovation, there's going to be some level of disruption. Uh, you know, our my, my main focus, I never approached it from the standpoint of necessarily wanting to disrupt the industry. I, I really approached it uh, from my side, from the standpoint of, you know, I've had, I've had some pretty incredible experiences working in music all this time. Like, you know, I saw Calvin Harris, I was backstage, I saw Calvin Harris open for Prince in the South of France. Um, you know, I, um, I, 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 stood on the stage at Coachella. These were kind of early experiences that, you know, even, even today for people who work in the music business, it's, it's difficult to, to have those experiences. Mm -hmm. So I saw the NFT space as a way for creators to connect with fans and patrons. Um, and I thought that there was, you know, we all, we all over here thought that there was a really interesting intersection here. You know, we thought that, well, we, we've had the ability to have this kind of access to these kinds of experiences. And wouldn't it be great if we could provide that to fans? Um, so, so that was really, I think, the main motivator behind this project was, was that utility. That's very powerful, Alex. I was wondering when you were talking about you having those experiences, I thought that's nice. He's very devoted to his industry, but then translating it into offering something similar to fans, that's powerful. I like that. So I guess one question I've got to ask, ask the Dancing Seahorse is also the name of a club in, in Hollywood. Is that correct? Hollywood Boulevard. So is, is, is that where the, the name came from or was it a coincidental? Was it a reverse engineering move or a forward move or how did that work? Well, it's actually neither of those things. Um, so, so we own the Dancing Seahorse Club. Um, it, it's a brick and mortar location that we set up in order to, to provide a space where our, our token holders could, could basically congregate here in Los Angeles. And we wanna put on events for them. And you know, th this is a space here in LA where we can provide experiences for our token holders. And uh, before it was called Dancing Seahorse, it, it was a, a club called Sabotage, um, which, which was also our venue. And what was happening was that um, we were booking artists in Sabotage and it's a very small venue. It has a capacity of only about 150 people. So we were bringing in top tier multi-platinum selling artists into this venue and, and you know, giving fans the, the opportunity to experience being that close to the artist. Because like I said, the venue is only 100, you know, 150, 200 person capacity. Wow. So, so this was also something that really aligned with the overall mission statement of Dancing Seahorse. Uh, you know, every week we were, well, we were booking the shows, but every week we were, we were turning up to, to our own venue and thinking like, you know, well, look how close all of these fans are to this artist. There should be a, there should be a, a membership type of, of um, organization that allows this to happen over and over again. And, and that was, you know, that was part of the inspiration for Dancing Seahorse. So then we renovated the club Sabotage and um, it, now, it now looks really, really beautiful. Actually, we're really excited about it. And then we renamed it the Dancing Seahorse Club. And now it is, it's, it's dedicated as a space where um, our, our token holders can, um, can uh, you know, network and, you know, experience music related events. So it's really interesting. I mean, I mean, the name also, I didn't realize it was set up on purpose for this project. I thought maybe you reversed into it, whatever. Dancing Seahorse. Can you tell me a bit about the origin of the name or, or the, the, the vision behind it? Yeah, so, well, as you know, NFTs are non-fungible tokens. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's what it stands for. And so the, I, I, believe, it's, I believe it's called the crown of, of the seahorse, but 
it's sort of the fin behind the head of the seahorse. Um, each one of those is unique. So no two seahorses actually have exactly the same crown. Uh, and because these tokens are non-fungible, that was the main inspiration for it, is that in the same way that seahorses are a unique animal in this way, every single one of our tokens is, is totally unique. Um, and again, non-fungible. So that was, that was sort of um, part of why we decided uh, on that name. It's cool. I think I haven't looked into it, but I think don't seahorses, doesn't the male rear the, rear the young? In a reversal of, of uh, he, he, I think that she lays the eggs and then he, he rears them, I think. So well, I, must I go think check I might that have heard out. something like that, but, yeah. but maybe <laughs> I, I, I probably need to do a little bit more research into it. Yeah, me too, me too. So let me go back to the project, Dancing Seahorse, which is a lovely name, right? So just, you're, you're funding the future music industry through NFTs and you're providing exclusive access. Now, is, is it just in the Dancing Seahorse premises or do you expect to have exclusive access all over the world in time? Yeah, it's definitely not just in the Dancing Seahorse premises. Um, that's that's one area where we'll be able to provide this kind of access. But, um, you know, for example, we have just signed deals to, to activate at suites um, at concerts for artists such as Post Malone and Bad Bunny um, here in Los Angeles. And we're, we're in active negotiations to to be uh, to be providing these kinds of experiences with with other, you know, similar, uh, you know, AAA level artists all over the world. So it's not it's it's definitely not just in this venue. Um, we're in discussions with uh, with two of the largest concert promoters in the world to become our partners in this project. So you know, that kind of even that you know provides just that much more um, access with, with having them on board. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and we're actually planning to, to put on some pretty large scale concerts here in Los Angeles uh, through our sister company, Stream Live, which is, still, which is still an active business. And those will be um, additional, you know, uh, additional outlets for, for Dancing Seahorse to provide uh, these kinds of experiences. We're in negotiations with, um, you know, the general managers of several festivals around the world uh, to to be able to activate at those festivals. So, yeah, there there is a whole slew of different types of activations that we're going to be able to offer to our token holders. And yeah, we're we're pretty excited about all of it. That sounds good. Board eights eat your heart out, I think. So tell me, <laughs> <laughs> who who are you backed by? Who who are the people um, that are supporting this project and uh, companies? Well, um, when you could you just clarify that question a little bit? Oh, more? I was just going through your website and it was uh, backed by and oh, backed by and had a whole bunch of names, um, which elude me now. So I need to go and have a look at your website again. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I can tell you like who you know we we who we've kind of had some 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 partnerships with, but um, you know, in terms of. In terms of people who are token holders, I mean, I mean, look at, at this point right now, we we've we've pre-sold um, a pretty significant number um, of these tokens. I'm not sure if I'm at liberty to say how many, but I know that, for example, in terms of the the music artists who have um, who who have uh, um, who are token holders and, and who have adopted the project, like Iggy Azalea is one, mm -hmm. G Herbo is another. And there are two other um, multi-platinum, you know, very successful artists who are token holders. We're not disclosing who they are right now, um, but yeah, no, you, we'll come coming. back to that. I mean, I, I just I found this page in your website. It's backed by some of the world's most prominent musical artists and investors. I guess I went when I read that. I went, oh, I wonder who that is or who they are. <laughs> yeah. So over time, we'll hear about more about that. So yes. there's also, there's, there's, the, there's the in real life experience and the networking. And then you also have handcraft 3D art. Is there a well-known artist involved with the art or is that in-house? Well, as I was, yeah, as I was saying, um, so Nifty is the agency, is the creative agency that we that we worked with in order to create these. And they, they've been unbelievable. Um, they're they're based in London. They're very, very well-versed in the, in the NFT space. And, you know, they, they've done projects for, 
Christian Louboutin and um, Range Rover and Braun and Rockstar. Um, so they're they're just they've been very successful in their own right. Um, but but they really really believe in the project. They've dedicated lots of resources to this project, and they're the ones responsible for creating the art that you see. Okay, and there's plans to bring out a marketplace as well. Uh, I think in late 2022. Mm -hmm. What will that yeah. So the Dancing Seahorse Marketplace is a, is a marketplace that, that we're uh, in the middle of creating right now. And it is a marketplace that, that accompanies the NFT. Um, but this is a marketplace for music related NFTs um, generally. So not just the Dancing Seahorse, but, but other uh, projects within the same space. And, you know, it's a, it's, it's an area that, that we're really watching very closely right now because you know there are companies that are, right now are selling beats as nfts but they're trying to figure out how to make the entire transaction happen and happen on the chain um there are uh there are there are nfts uh out there like dancing seahorse that have um you know some music related utility however we believe that you know, we, we are and are going to be um, far and away the most prominent music related NFT in terms of utility. We don't know anybody who has signed the kind of activations that, that, that we've set up in such a short period of time. But to the extent that, you know, there are other NFTs that kind of have a similar uh, vision, they'll be able to uh, sell their NFTs on our on our platform, the Dancing Seahorse Marketplace. And then, you know, obviously another area that we're watching very closely is, is ticketing as NFTs. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's something that, that is, is really developing right now. But like I said earlier, uh, we are planning our own concerts and it's really just a matter of time before uh, NFTs become concert tickets or concert tickets are sold as NFTs. So, when that happens, that'll definitely be available on our marketplace too. Brilliant. And then there's two drops coming up, one this month and one next month, the 444 legendary seahorses and 8,888 premium seahorses. What's the idea behind that? Okay, yeah. So um, basically the idea behind it is, uh, you know, so, so the, legend, the, the legend seahorses are, you know, have a, a, a significant rarity to them. Um, and, and those are those are the, the rarest uh, seahorses there are. But, um, you know, that's that's why we only decided to create 444 of them. There will only ever be 444. And then there's 8,888 uh, premium seahorses. And, uh, you know, the utility and the access associated with both the premium and the legend seahorse uh, seahorses is going to be truly unforgettable. So, um, you know, we, we are definitely excited about both drops. And then tell me about the token, the rock coin. How is mm -hmm. that going to work? So the rock coin is, uh, is, is, is our accompanying native token. Um, again, that's also something that's under development right now, but it is a, it, it's, it's going to be a, a music related cryptocurrency specifically for use um, in and around events. So it's our vision that, uh, you know, somewhere down the line, people will be able to pay for concert tickets with cryptocurrency. And then once they are at the concert, they'll be able to pay for concessions with cryptocurrency uh, that concert promoters could be, you know, could be nodes for cryptocurrency and then they can offer artist guarantees in cryptocurrency. We would like for all of this to happen through the rock coin, but this is really the native token for our, um, for our, our project. And, there's a pretty good marriage between the rock coin and the dancing seahorse NFT and the dancing seahorse marketplace. It's all, you know, blockchain mm -hmm. uh, and, and music and web three related. So at the intersection of those three worlds uh, comes these three uh, projects, or I should say iterations of the same project. I think it, it's actually making a lot of sense. So you come from a musical background, you have access to some huge, super duper names. Um, and you're just using, not just just, but using technology to make more sense of fan engagement and interaction and the networking and in real life, it's, it's, it's very clever. I, I, it all's coming together. And it's nice because sometimes devs get together and have an idea 
but they haven't got the the nous, you know, for the you haven't got the contacts with whatever industry that they're trying to reinvent. So it's very interesting here. And then just a final question, Alex, uh, you're going to be exhibiting, uh, in fact, you're going to be uh, sorry, the lead uh, sponsor, the headline sponsor for Zebu Live in London at the end of September. Um, why did you choose to do that? And, and what do you hope to achieve from the event? I mean, look, we, we have a ton of respect um, and admiration for, for what Zebu Live has done. They're truly, you know, uh, trailblazers in the Web3 industry. And we wanted to be a part of it. We wanted to 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 um, you know utilize that platform in order to announce um, our project and 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 sort of announce it on the scene. And you know this this is a, a really a really special um, special event for us. So that's uh, that's kind of why why we wanted. And hopefully you'll be able to find some venues in London because yeah. London's uh, LA is a bit far for me to travel. But um, London, I can get to London for <laughs> some exclusive uh, 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 ticket holder dancing seahorse events. Very exciting times. Well, we do, yeah, we are. We are going to actually have a private event that that we'd love to invite you to. So, so please just, um, yeah, let's let's talk about it closer to the date. Brilliant! That sounds amazing. Um, wow, it sounds. I love the whole thing and dancing seahorses. I think you've happened on a very nice name and a name. I know you know names aren't always uh, the most important thing, but Dancing seahorses, it just, it sounds lovely. It, all the whole thing mm. sounds amazing. So Alex, then just to finish off, if people want to find out about you, where can they go to have a look? Yeah, really, um, dancingseahorse.com mm -hmm. uh, is our website. And then our Instagram is uh, at dancing seahorse or okay. at underscore dancing seahorse, I should say. Okay, that's amazing. And we're also, uh, we're, oh, we're also on Twitter and Discord Excellent. as well. Excellent. And I can send you uh, all, all those handles. Brilliant. That's... And I'll include them in, in, in the, the links below. No, very interesting. It sounds, it does sound fascinating. I love, and I love the idea too, is what you were saying. You're talking to festival, festival organizers and big events and they have this little, you know, the actual exclusive membership networking for small numbers to meet their stars or just to be in the vicinity of the artists, which is um, obviously very exciting. So thank you so much for your time, Alex. Um, I wish you every success. And it sounds like really amazing. And uh, Dancing Seahorses, yes, here we come. Thank you so much.